This week, it's finally here. Our reviews for Escape Room, Stan Noe, and Captain Marvel, of course. Plus, we've got a whole bunch of trailers to talk about, and also Suicide Squad news. All this and more in this upcoming Tractions episode of Midnight Double Feature. Quick episode. You ready to pump this out? Let's pump it out, man. We always talk about it all the time. Let's do a quick one and it ends up being like two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, um, I think we got to do a few shout outs. We've had a crazy week of celebrities passing away, which is... Well, talk about just going like really hyped to yeah, really we're, sad. We're starting, but, um, this, we're starting this episode on a, strong, on a strong, very positive note. Do, do you have all the names uh, in front of you? Uh, no. Okay, well... Obviously, the, the big biggest one, one is that, Luke Perry. Yeah, Luke Perry of uh, 91210 fame. Uh, that's, Riverdale, that's Obviously Buffy. very upset. Yeah, R- Riverdale too, which is very recent um, show. Um, King Kong Bundy, who's a, who's a wrestler, famed for fighting like Hulk Hogan and stuff. Um, the lead singer of The Prodigy, whose name escapes me. Keith um, Flint. Keith Flint, yes. Um, he was a, it was a fire starter. Um, uh, it sucks about dude, that, dude. And uh, there was, he was, was forty nine. Yeah, that's young, dude. That's that's, that's really that's young. So young. Yeah, um, which is really sad. And there was there's one more that is escaping my mind. Do you have wow, that? We, we are doing we are doing so well on this podcast right now. Pumping through it. <laughs> uh, you mentioned it earlier, so I thought you had it in front of you. Sorry. Uh, no, I don't. No, that's that's all I have. So. Oh, okay. Maybe that was it. Um, if so, if there was someone else, that sucks. I'm um, very organized here, but yeah. Um, We're on a tight ship here at Midnight Double Feature. Dude, t- 2016, ha- uh, sorry, sorry, 2018, dude, the years fly past. Last year had a lot of, a lot of them and um, yeah, man, it's getting, it's getting crazy. Maybe this is part of his I mean, growing Stan up being old. this year, right? Y- yeah, I think so. Did he? Um, um, no, it was who, last wait, year. Who? Stan Lee, right? No, last year. No, no, that was last yeah, year. My bad. That was last my year. Bad. But the, but the first because mo- he died before um, Spider Verse. That's right. We had a yep. thing in there. Yep. yep. But this was the first. But Captain Marvel was the first Marvel film that was released since. We'll since, get to uh, that. That unfortunate. Yeah, man. Um, but look, let's pump into some news real quick. Um, the the biggest one. It seems to be like a, like an ongoing story uh, about Suicide Squad, or I think it's called the Suicide Squad. Directed yes, it by is. James yep. Gunn. Um, so the big one is Will Smith is not returning. Um, let's just talk about that for a second. Will he be missed? Well, before we get into that, like this, this goes into my entire theory that they're basically just doing a reboot. Like they're they're rebooting the entire cast, um, starting from scratch. Because uh, honestly, I think that's the best option. Um, and to your question, no, I don't think he'll be missed. Um, uh, I, I- Honestly, he was ne- next to um, Margaret Robbie. He was the most charismatic Did person. You say Margaret? Film. Margaret? Margot. Oh, okay. I thought you said Margaret. I was like, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Margaret. <laughs> no, he was. He was very. You know, he was. He was charismatic in that film, but he wasn't playing Deadshot. He was playing Will Smith, playing Deadshot. You know, because um, Will Smith doesn't really do characters much. He does. Uh, you know, but you know. I wonder if it was James Gunn's decision or if it was Will's, because Will's um he just got announced to do a film for uh, playing um Serena Williams' dad, which has got a bit of controversy because <laughs> people are saying he doesn't have the right skin tone and stuff. But like, I think he's just tr- I think he's just had a few stinkers and he wants to be in some winners. Um, Matt, I think tell us who the suicide- tell us who the front runner is to replace him. The rumor. Look, nothing's confirmed, but there's talk about Idris Elba playing. Yeah. But that yeah. makes me think if he's meant to be, if it's a sequel, right? It's not a sequel. it's a sequel. It's called The Suicide Squad. 
you know, we don't know, but like, you know, it probably, right? Mm. But like, can you imagine Idris Elba doing a Will Smith impersonation of playing Deadshot? He's not going to do that. He's not. This is I, not. I it's not. not what this is, man. Like, it's it's going to be a totally like straight from scratch reboot. Uh, yeah, like it, but that would imply no Harley Quinn. No, they'll have Harley Quinn because she's in fucking Birds of Prey and like three so other movies. So they'll reboot everyone except for her. I'd say so. Yeah, maybe, but it'd be fucking weird. But you know, DC don't always make the decisions that make the most sense. Well, you know, they're making a trench movie, oh. so yeah. You know what? I'm gonna call it. That film's not gonna get made. <laughs> I think it's a thing just to lure in investors or something. Or you know, sometimes you hear films get announced but they never get made. Like I think yeah. that's one of them. Um, there's also um word that uh, Joel Kidderman, who played Rick Flag, uh, won't be returning. He definitely probably won't be missed. His character did very little to service the plot. And it it makes no sense because that type of character is sort of built up to be the main character of that film. Like, he's the leader of the squad, you know? But in the film, he's like a supporting cast member, which makes no s- Like, that film had a really bad script. I actually, just, just quickly, I actually do like Joel Kinnaman, though. Like, uh... uh oh, no hate to him. Yeah. Like, he, he's all right. No, no, like, he did- For that role, he did what he had to do, you know? No, I'm not. I'm not specifically talking about Suicide Squad, but like, I mean, he was good in. Um, he was. I thought he was decent in the Robocop remake. Um, he, he's yeah. been. He's been in a lot of shit, man. Like he's. Uh, fuck. What was the first thing I saw him in? Um, Jesus Christ. Oh, the girl with the dragon tattoo. He was in that. Um, yeah. He was in Safe House. Uh, yeah, I, I always think he brings kind of like a good presence. He was in Run All Night, that Liam, uh, Liam Neeson movie, um, Altered Carbon, of course. Uh, but yeah, he, yeah, he's always great, I think. So, yeah. Um, so, this Suicide Squad reboot slash not reboot slash whatever it is seems to be so far, it's going to be a whole new cast. Um, I would. Is there any other members you'd like to see no. return that you would ho- <laughs> like to see done better? Uh, I mean, all of them, really, because uh, that movie is not great. But probably, yeah, probably, um, probably Killer Croc. Yeah, he's always been a. I think he's the uh, biggest uh, missed opportunity in that movie, to be honest. So. Yeah, he could have been the Hulk of that movie, but instead he was. Yeah, total missed. Um, I've always liked the character, kind of like in a cheesy way of Captain Boomerang. When they attach an actor like um, Jack Courtney, I'm starting to, you know, I have I kind of have high hopes because he's not like he's an unknown actor. And then he's in the movie for like maybe three minutes tops. Like he just stands in the background. He has like maybe two sentences of dialogue. Um, so I'd like to see something with that. Um, I'm happy to lose Katana if needed. I'm happy to lose... Dude, half of yeah, those characters not- are paper thin. Yeah. Like, you can lose all of them. I wouldn't give a shit. Like, this, yeah. Start well, in that scratch. interpretation of film, for sure. Um, But then who would you want to see come in? Do you know? Do you have any ideas? No, it's not my job. <laughs> 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 uh, no, uh, honestly, it's it's a weird- Knowing James Gunn, he'll pick the weirdest characters possible. So, but- I would like to see someone like, I don't know, are you familiar with the character King Shark? Yeah, I am, but it's like at the same time I'm not. Like uh, these are, yeah. these characters are not very familiar to me. Uh even the Suicide Squad before the movie I was barely familiar. I remember seeing them in that Arrow episode. Um yeah. but yeah, it's not really a thing. Okay. So. Let me let me think of here's something crazy, right? Before we move on. So Suicide Squad typically is like it's a, it's a good dumping ground for villain characters from other films, right? Or or from other franchise and stuff. If we used characters, if you used characters, if they were still trying to connect the universes, which they're probably not, it would be like, let me, let me just think, what would it be? It would be Zod from Man of Steel coming back. Maybe Doomsday from, from, um, oh. Batman v Superman. Um, then who would be? It'd be from Aquaman. Orm. We'd probably have Black Manta. Black Manta would be cool. Um, or, or Orm. They could do one or the other or both. Um, one, nah, they wouldn't do Ares from Wonder Woman, but they might do Doctor Poison. But that's even less exciting. Um, this is Matt. I'm falling asleep. I'm, yeah, this movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't do that. This is I the don't worst. want to see that. Matt, Suicide let's Squad fucking movie. move on. I'm done with Suicide yeah. Squad. Move on. Look, 
You mentioned Arrow. Um, very, very minor. I want to mention um, Arrow, the longest running DC CW show is ending. It um, will end after a shortened um, season eight. Um, the reason it kind of sucked in the middle part was because they want to do Suicide Squad and told they couldn't at last minute because of the movie. Um, and I just want to say, I'm going to miss that show. Um, that show was partial inspiration of one of my films, Bleeding Backs, um, when I did an action or took an action. Um, it, I thought it was, it was one of the first shows I saw that did martial arts well on TV, um, which I feel like, I don't know if it paved the way for Daredevil, but like there's definitely some crossover. Um, obviously, Daredevil is the much higher quality show. And um, so what you want, but season two of that show was pretty fucking great. I, with, I um, think so as well. Deathstroke. While we're, while um, we're here, um, I also want to mention as well that uh, Clark Gregg, uh, who plays Agent Coulson, uh, indicated that Agents, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is going to end after season seven. So, Oh, yes. I did uh, see that too. Yeah, he said, um, here I am 11 years later. We just started shooting the seventh and final season of Marvel's Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, I never I never got past season one, so <laughs> that's a, yeah. I got to season, I think it's five. I did which, hear it which up, one so. that goes, Yeah, and a, a lot of the fans say it gets better every season. Um, I always just found that show has too many episodes. Like They're like 22-minute episodes, and the cast, a lot of them can be hit and miss, but like, Towards the later seasons, they started doing more su- superhero stuff. Kreese played a big part, um, and they had Ghost Rider in for like half a season, which was all I know awesome. is that Chloe Bennett is a babe, so she is. Um, yeah, and she became Quake, yeah. which is kind of important. Kind of, yeah. They tried to do Inhumans, and they tried to do another show, and that was terrible. Um, let's move on to some trailer talk. All right, um, all the trailers we got over the last couple of weeks are all trailer number two. Or international trailers. So let's call this section the check-in. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> also, there's Game of Thrones. Fuck, segment. I should have mentioned <laughs> that at the beginning. Uh, anyways, so uh, I want to quickly go through a few trailers. Let's quickly talk about each one. And let's see, um, are we still interested? Have our opinions changed? Um, the so, so let's start with the one that came out literally the day of this recording. Uh, Brightburn, trailer two. You said when we talked about it that you wanted to see a lot more. I was sold by just the the fucking premise. By trailer two, they showed a lot more in this. Where are you at now? Yeah, now the needles moved. the The needles moved forward. So, uh, this is literally, literally on Sunday. I was telling you, I need to see more of Brightburn. I need to see. Um, I, I need a little bit more. I, I'm not fully sold on it yet. Like, um, I mean, because I've seen Evil Superman before, uh, Injustice, I guess. But but this is this, done with this a horror t- perspective, which is what gets me excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah but 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 still, like, it, it's still Evil Superman. Uh, like for for more more than a horror thing. Like, if you're a superhero fan, that's kind of what you're looking forward to as well. So, uh, yeah, this this trailer won me over a little bit more. I'm st- I'm still not 100% on it. I'm, I'll watch it, but it's still a bit... Uh, it looks super cliche. Like, I feel like I know where everything's going. Um, like Eliz- The thing is, is, like, it's never been done before, though. I know what you mean. We sort of know the beats of this story, but they're just putting it in a new perspective. It, well... It's, it's an- no, hold on, but- hold on, Matt. Wait, 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 let, me, let me finish. So, it has been done. This, this superhero... The evil superhero shot in a horror movie, like, sure, that hasn't been done, but really what it is, it's a fucking monster movie uh, with the mother telling him, oh, you know, you're good at heart. It's like kind of chronicle. Yeah. It's chronicle. Like, literally, it's kind of chronicle. So, it, uh, like chronicle is the closest thing you can compare it to. It's like chronicle meets, um, I don't know, what's a more action-y version of Conjuring? Um, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. But for me, man, I was sold straight away. And you, the only thing I was kind of iffy on, and I think we talked about this on the podcast, was um, got the vibe that they'd spent a, like more than half the film about him discovering his powers and then he turns evil like maybe towards the end. But this showed us a lot more and sure, a lot of us around the same location. Now I'm thinking like maybe the switch happens earlier on and that would make for a more exciting film. I don't know which way they'll go. I'm still on board either way. 
Um, do you have any other notes before we move on to the next one? Yeah, most of it, I feel like when I watch it, I'm just going to be like, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be bored. Like like him getting bullied and shit. Like I'm just like, uh, I don't know. I've seen it all before and I know where it's going to go and yeah. But don't you don't you empathize with the parents and how scared they must be? Well, like- yeah, but that's if Elizabeth Banks and uh, fucking Roy from The Office pull it off. I have so much faith. I, 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 I have so much faith. I don't know why. This is not a director we've heard of. Like, it's, it's yeah. The trailers are real. Both trailers to me are really good. I think it's- They really, uh, they got the tone right. Like, the tone, the tone's very moody. Yeah. Yeah. And I just haven't, I feel like we've seen, like, slashes and we've seen, like, other types of, like, horror films where it's based around a villain, but nothing where the guy can fly. And it's, and the cool thing, it's a kid, so he's, you know, he's, like, so irrational and stuff. This is what fucking Dark Phoenix could have been, but we'll, we'll tackle that last. Um, maybe. I don't know. Let's, let's move on. Um, speaking of superheroes and characters who can fly, Shazam. Uh, the second trailer starts off more like typical blockbuster with the, dah, the inception horns and stuff. Um, we got a few new jokes. We got a little bit more of action scenes with the, the villain that we still have hardly seen any of. Um, has the needle moved either way for you on this? Um, I was already kind of positive on it. Now I'm <laughs> like, although yes, this is a better trailer. Um, it, it for some reason it gives me a Hancock vibe, and that's not really you know necessarily a good wrong. thing. You're you're not wrong to think. I think it's kind of doing what Hancock wanted to do, but maybe hopefully a little bit better. Yeah, and, and, and like the colors uh, are all like kind of muted. Like I know why they've muted the colors. It's because they want. They want Shazam to stand out. Like, he's bright red. Oh, and he yeah. does. Yeah. He definitely does. Yeah, yeah. it is great. But um, I, I do have faith that this will probably be good. Um, the director's fantastic. So, and DC have been on an uptick lately. So, uh, hopefully it is better. Um, like, it, like, this is a lot. This trailer is a lot better. And, and honestly, Zachary, Zachary Levi fits this role like a glove, it looks like. So, I'm really keen. Yeah. I honestly think it's going to be... Um in my opinion, the best DC film yet. Um, in the since Man of Steel, um, I think it could, in my opinion, maybe top Wonder Woman. Um, and Wonder Woman's fucking great. Um, let's move on. Um, uh, not really much to talk about with this one. It's kind of more of the same. But we got another trailer for Detective Pikachu too. Um, the big, the big reveal for this is Mewtwo at the end, which some Pokey nerds are getting upset about, saying. I know he's too thick, or whatever. For me, I'm just Ugh. like, "Fuck you!" It's how he always looked like. But um, do you have any any new opinions on Detective Pikachu? No, not really. It's more like it's more like just giving us some more world building and what the movie's gonna kind of look like visually. Um, I it is you know as someone who did used to play Pokemon Blue and uh, all that shit and used to be into that Mewtwo movie that first one with Mew and Mewtwo, uh, which I know that there is a movie coming out soon. Uh, it is really exciting to see Mewtwo kind of live action, like kind of back. But no, yeah. honestly, this movie's not for some reason it's not moving the needle for me at all. Really. Yeah. Well, honestly, trailer two compared to trailer one, not a lot of big reveals. Um. You're like, sure, we got to show Mewtwo, but like, we don't know how he fits in the story. He may not even be a threat. It's Mewtwo, so he's probably a threat, but you know. Um, I feel like, yeah, there's not really much to say on that. Um, but yeah, we did mention, just for anyone who doesn't know, and the interesting one, check out the first Pokemon movie is getting an animated remake, but it's like a CGI sort of thing. Um, I don't love its art style, by the way, um, but we don't need to talk about that today. Um, the big one. Uh, in terms of trailers that come back, we got a trailer, the second trailer for Dark Phoenix or X-Men Dark Phoenix. And the next day, which to me was kind of like more of the same um, in the after party area, but a few people talking about it, it's like, oh, cool. They showed us the death of Mystique. And I feel like they kind of alluded to Quicksilver. Not that interesting. But then the next day, Louis International trailer, that was fucking great. It's, oh, I wouldn't, I'm watching, I wouldn't like, say great. <laughs> I wouldn't, let's let's hold off on the great. Dude, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like I watched it. Uh, I got a little hyped, and I got mad at myself for being hyped because we had two <laughs> terrible trailers, or just very generic and boring trailers. And then this third one comes out, 
And I don't know what it is, but I'm like, shit, I'm excited I'm for it. I'm not going to say great. I'm definitely not going to say great. That international trailer, it's good. It's a lot better than the first one. Um, mo- mo- mostly because they focus, um, like they put a lot of Magneto in and any more Michael Fassbender in any situation is always a good thing. So, um, plus it also gives his like motivations in the movie. Uh, like, you know, he's like, oh, we got to kill the girl. Uh, and yeah. I'm sure by the end of it, he'll come over to the good side like he always does. So, uh, well, yeah. what I liked about it is it's a bit more story focused and it sort of it focuses, I think, the most on Gene, um, played by, is it Sophie Turner? Is that her name? Yep. Yeah. Um, and it's like, okay, we're actually putting some effort in this character here, which is which they didn't do in the last film. Um, so, it's, okay, that's what this film needs. That's good. The only part I'm really worried about, and I get they're trying to be comic book accurate, but, like, clearly it starts off with the X-Men in space, and I believe this takes place in the 90s. Like, how the fuck are you going to pull off X-Men going to space in your first act and make it not ridiculously cheesy um, based on your previous films. I don't know how they're going to pull that off. But, um, yeah, dude, like, I'm kind of sold based on this new trailer. Um, but this trailer, too, was a snooze fest. I'll, I'll still um, not, I'll, I, I won't say this opening day. Um, I might just because I'm a nerd, but, like, that's not because I think it's going to be great. <laughs> um, okay, we've got two more trailers to talk about that aren't. These are new trailers. Um, we talk about Sophie Turner, so we got to talk about Game of Thrones. Oh, baby. I am I so forgot to excited. mention it earlier. Um, yeah, Game of Thrones, baby. We got first full, fully fledged, proper trailer. Finally, we man. Don't get much, we don't get much story, but we see a shit ton of dragons. We see well, we it's- We op- don't need story. Opens up. Yeah, well, I don't want too much spoil. Plus, it's only six episodes, right? Is it five or six episodes? It's six episodes, and it's like, like we've seen a little bit of footage here and there, uh, like like HBO have been teasing us with the with the dick, and like now it's just like <laughs> take the full dick, and they just slap it on yeah. the table. Uh, this looks. I can't phenomenal. wait till their balls deep in my asshole. I mean, what? <laughs> what? I didn't say that. Um, this this dude, looks phenomenal, dude. Like, yeah, it looks great. Apparently, they spent approximately fifteen million per episode. Yeah, I and, wouldn't be surprised. Wh- they also said and- that. They shot the uh, the longest consecutive battle scene in any movie or TV. So it's like literally bigger than King's Land. Sorry, bigger than Helm's Deep. Bigger than anything you've seen before on te- on on television or or film. And, and just think, the first time we ever saw a war scene, Game of Thrones, they're about to go to war, and then. Fucking Peter Dinklage gets hit in the head and blacks out and he missed the whole fight. <laughs> that was the first war. I remember when I watched it, because I was late to the party watching Game of Thrones, everyone's all talking about the big battles and shit. So when I get ready for my first battle, I'm like, oh my God, it's going to be so great. And it's such a fucking cop out. I'm like, you motherfuckers. And well, now they- you look at the shit they're doing. Yeah, that and episode- damn, man, it's so impressive. That episode is also going to be directed by Miguel Sapochnik, uh, who also directed the amazing Battle of the Bastards episode. So yes. you know that the, that episode is in good hands. I feel like what they're trying to do is purposely um, top that. Kind of like how like, Daredevil used to try and top every hallway fight. And you know what? I'm okay. Let them do it because it'll be amazing. Um, we got one more trailer. Midsommar. Do you want to talk about this one? Yeah, this is this one's a bit of a weird one. So this one's directed by um, Ari Ari Aster, uh, who directed Hereditary. So um, it it looks like it kind of looks like a Jim Jones culty sort of vibe movie. Which uh, look, man, I'm down for. Uh, like the trailer looked kind of fantastic. Like the it, it doesn't it doesn't look like a horror movie. Like the the way it's shot, the colors, the bright colors. Uh, well, that's the, that's the thing I noticed. It's the first horror trailer I've ever seen, ever, where there's not a single shot at nighttime when it's dark. Yeah, from what I can yeah. from what I remember, everything's done in the day. Well, it's a blue sky, and they still managed to pull up the ho- pull off the horror vibe. And so that alone, props to him. Like I got to commend that. That's great. Well, yeah, we know from from Hereditary, this guy has an eye for cinematography. Man, that movie was beautifully shot. So this this guy's this guy. I think, man, this movie's this movie's one to watch. I think. Um, again, it's distributed by A twenty four, who are an amazing studio. Uh, that that release like little horror movies like this. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm definitely stoked for this, and I, I do want to see 
maybe one more trailer before I'm sold. But yeah. Um, you know what vibe I get? Remember the movie The Village? Yeah. But like a better <laughs> not, not like, like if the village yeah. was if the village was filmed by you know, made by people who are like more sophisticated and respectable. <laughs> um and that's it for news. I think that's the end of the episode, man. Um, see you later. See you guys. Oh wait. Oh wait. I forgot. Captain Motherfucking Marvel. We also got other trailers. Um Stan Oli and Escape reviews. Room. So here's what we'll do. We'll do reviews for Escape Room first, because we both saw that together. Then um, you can uh, give us your thoughts for Stan and Ollie. These will all be spoilery. And then we'll do Captain Marvel, spoiler free. And then we'll warn you guys. And then we'll do spoilers. Because at the time of this recording, um, this movie, we saw an advanced screening yesterday. We're recording it the next day. And this podcast will probably drop before it's actually publicly released. So if you don't want spoilers, we'll save you. Um, sound good, bro? Sounds good, man. All right, let's jump into reviews. Our first one for Escape Room. This serves as an entry voucher. For Minos, Minos Escape, escape rooms. rooms. Be the, the first, first to escape, escape our, our most immersive, immersive room, room yet. And win a million dollars. So, uh, when does the game start? Let's talk about Escape Room. Do you want to start us off? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it was not good. Let's just uh, let's leave it at that. Uh, but no, it it was okay. It was fine. It was not. It was not terrible. It was just um, it, we. I had low expectations going in. Uh, this was not a movie that I was really kind of anticipating, and that's why I saw it three weeks later than its release date, uh, which is really late for me to watch a, a movie uh, that's that's out. So it's it's strange. But uh, yeah, this this movie it was. It was just it was okay, right? It was a, yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, like the production design was actually probably one of the best things. Like the way um, the rooms looked, and, and and you know the way, like because honestly, some of the 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 visuals were, were kind of striking. So that first room with the fire, like that the the elements coming online, that was awesome. Um, the the ice wall, you know, as far fetched as as it is, like it it looks cool. Um, and, and, you know, by the end of it, by the end of the, the movie, it, it's kind of like, it's in on the joke. It knows exactly what it is. And I appreciate that in movies like this. Like, I don't, don't take it too seriously. Know exactly what you are, know what kind of script you are and just kind of take the ball and run with it. And that's exactly what it does. Like by the time we get to the end, I'm just like, okay, I, um, you know, it's not the, it's not the ending that I, I, I saw it going in, which is surprising, but I'm glad we're here because it's kind of like, this is, I'm down for this. Like, this is so cheesy. It's so over the top. And it's just, um, yeah. Uh, the, the death scenes in this, uh, uh, it, I didn't mind them. Uh, and I know you did. I didn't mind them because it's more like, it's not really trying to be a saw or like a, or, or, or a hostel or anything like that. It's, it's more kind of like, um, like just process of it's, elimination. You turn it's to trying me. To be young, it's, it's aiming for a younger audience than those. Yeah, films. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, like you can still pull off some pretty gory. I mean, like you can pull off some shitty, crazy deaths with with an M rating, but it's still. Yeah, I didn't. That doesn't bother me. Like you know, if they're dead, they're dead. Like I don't give a fuck. Like don't I don't care about blood. Like honestly, I'm good. Um, but yeah, like the the acting is probably really what you what you kind of expect. Man, like some of the characters are just kind of straight out unlikable. Um, there's this main guy, this this black guy who's just absolutely awful, and you're like, well, he kind of like uh, have to, he kind of has to be like that. I'm just like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know if they're in on it. It just it didn't feel like it to me. Um, no, nah, he, he I, I honestly threw here like he was meant to be unlikable. Like that's why he turns in the end to fight. Like I feel like they said usually when you deal with a character with like. Whenever you see a character in a film who has like an earpiece in their ear and they're talking on that on the phone, they're usually meant to be the douchebag. Yeah, but, but he I wasn't. Mean, come but they didn't commit on. to the douchebagginess, you know. No, which they usually didn't. They, they didn't would. commit to it enough. I feel uh, like if they did more, it would have been. Yeah, and, and better. you know, coupled that with the fact that it was like it was kind of predictable at parts, man. Like I was just like this this smart kid who knows exactly everything about the escape rooms. Uh, he's gonna get killed first. 
And uh, lo and behold, man, he was killed first. Like, it was just one of those you things. Called so. it. You called it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but other than that, man, it's not overly memorable. I, I'm literally forgetting parts of it as we speak. Like, I'm sure if... <laughs> If I went back and listened to this podcast episode, you can like hear me trying to like remember it. Um, it's not it's not an amazing movie. Uh, maybe maybe a Netflix movie. Maybe that's close. Um, yeah, I'm probably it's 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 possible for me. It's probably a five. So, yeah. Yeah. Um. So I do remember it pretty clearly. But that's because this type of film, I feel. The, the the structure kind of like it's a film that writes itself in a way. Um, I love calling it discount saw because that's what it is. It's it's the concept of saw of trapping people in a in a maze of different rooms of puzzles they got to figure out. If they don't pass the puzzle, they'll die. Um, the problem is is like what made the saw films good is like they had uh, or at least the first few at least. Um, but they tried to emulate later. Is it had a level of sophistication? Like they always were. They they kind of base them around characters, like even the more forgettable characters, like the 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 puzzles related to them. So you learn about the characters, and the mastermind behind it all had like an overarching plan and had really great twists. Um, so it it had a foundation of like of intelligence. Uh, this film has none of that. <laughs> Straight up, um, the the big twist, which is fucking not a twist, um, is that. Yeah, just a bunch of rich people pay to gamble on people's lives with this. And, like, the little thing they're trying to figure out um, just be, oh, they're all just people who happen to be lucky and they thought luck would be a good thing, which is a uh, – it's a it's barely a plot thing. That being said, like, they did an okay job of trying to establish some of the characters and they did um, – look, the acting could have been worse. I'm not saying it was amazing, but it could have been worse. Um and I didn't, I didn't hate this movie, and I went in expecting it to be complete shit. Maybe that's why I'm so positive about it. I thought it was going to be complete garbage, and it it was actually, uh, I would say, more than possible. Um, I really enjoy, like it, it. Knew exactly what it was. Um, I think I did have some troubles to spend with my suspension of disbelief at times. Like some of the rooms were just like, actually, most of the rooms, like, oh, this is. It's impossible. I don't care what your budget is. You can't do this in real life. You won't. It, you can't do this. But at sometimes I was able to put out. But what I liked about it most is, so this film wanted you to keep guessing, and a lot of the beats were predictable. Yes, but you and me sitting here in the theater were making guesses to each other. We weren't always right, especially me. And that's how I know subconsciously this film's actually doing a good job. Well, you're just an idiot. <laughs> no, no, but like, um, that's how you know the f- uh, a film is at least accomplishing what it's set out to do because it's it's wanting you to guess, and it was making me guess. I weirdly cared about wanting to be right, um, and I have to give it props for that. Not saying the film was good in that regard, but yeah, like it it actually it wasn't just a a shitty paint paint by numbers they it actually had some merit to it of the way it was put together and um you and me both at the end they set up for a sequel and 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 i remember you turning to me it's like you know you said something like you know it wasn't great but i'd I'd watch a sequel and i remember just looking at you like fuck me too (laughs) well um, the reason i'd watch a sequel for that the reason i'd watch a sequel is because i don't think um uh, it didn't answer enough questions uh, like if you have a movie that's based around asking questions, then don't put seventy five percent of them into a potential sequel. Well, you and me had a massive debate in the car park over this. Where I say no, we got the answers. They weren't detailed answers, but we got all the answers to all the questions. I feel, um, except for they found their headquarters. Now they're going to go there. You know, I feel like I, you know, they were generic. And a lot of times you would be like, well, how come we don't know this? And how can we didn't see this? And I was like, oh, I can answer that. It's shitty writing. <laughs> it's just not, it's just not well, it's not that great. But they, they technically answer all the questions I had. Um, so I can't fault it for that. But yeah, I don't think it was much better than you did. I give it about a six out of 10. Um, it is fun. 
it is worth watching. And I and I, you did mention I was pretty disappointed with the the weird lack of blood. Almost no blood in this film. Most of the deaths. It's not like they happen all off camera, but they don't involve blood. And when I go to a horror film, I kind of want a little bit of that. Um, I can understand why not. And like, I, so I can't fault it too much for that. But um, I don't know that's just personal taste. But yeah, six out of 10 for me. Um, let's move on. Um, I didn't see this next one. Let's talk about Stan and Ollie. How do you feel about the size of the audiences? I've been a little disappointed. And they said, could you persuade Stan and Ollie to do some publicity in order to turn the tour around? Would there be any more money? They said no. Well, who is they? People. Lay it on me, bro. Stan and Ollie. Let's do it. Dude, this movie was great. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so, next movie. <laughs> yeah, next movie. Let's move on. Uh, it's about Laurel and Hardy, uh, who are a couple of comedians back in the 50s. Um, actually, I think it might have been earlier than that, but this is basically after their heyday, and this is basically the story of them uh, trying to, after after a split, trying to come back together and, and go on this tour. Um, and, man, it's just such a personal story, and honestly... The two leads, John C. Riley and Steve Coogan, are fucking fantastic. Um, they, yeah. Steve Coogan especially, dude. Like he has some of the best, like honestly, probably the best performance of his career. And I've seen a lot of Steve Coogan movies. Um, John C. Riley also, man. Again, he's great. Whenever he does drama, he's fantastic. Uh, the only thing that I can really knock on him though is his prosthetics. Like his facial prosthetics are not great. Uh, probably because it's a low budget BBC movie. Um, but yeah, it, like it, you could tell, it's just not. Yeah, it's it, it totally took me out of it a little bit. Uh, but man, the comedy was great. Um, the way the story unfolds is fantastic. Uh, the, the but the the massive the the great thing here is the performances. Um, these these two are absolutely fantastic. Some of the cinematography is really great too, man. Like it opens on this sort of like rolling single cam. Oh, sorry, single shot. Uh, and it just goes on for a while, and it's just it's beautiful. Um, and in the end, it's just one of those really like heartfelt, touching stories about these two comedians who kind of like got uh, got got lost all along the wayside when um, you know acts like Abbott and Costello ended up coming up uh, into the into the competition. So um, it, it was it was great, man. I, I definitely recommend this movie. Uh, check it out. I honestly, I'm gonna go as high as nine. Like this movie's fantastic. Damn. So yeah. Oh. Well, that means we only have one film left. What could that possibly be? Fuck, I don't know. Captain motherfucking Marvel, baby. We love our Marvel films here at Midnight Double Feature. I can't wait to talk about this. We'll do a really quick non-spoilers, and then we're gonna go. We're gonna go all out on spoilers, and I can't wait for that. Um, let's do it. So, scrolls are the bad guys. And you're a Kree, a race of noble warriors. Heroes. Noble warrior heroes. So, non-spoilers, Captain Marvel. Um, Pretty good. I'm just going to say good. <laughs> you know what? Think- I, I would have started off that way. So, for the first half of the film... It is pretty generic sort of Marvel. But, you know, generic Marvel is still good, you know? Um, and then for me, there's like a twist about halfway through where that just involves such more personal stakes and stuff. And it's like, oh, I'm all in now. Like, this is, this is, I really like that. And um, I love the whole cast. I love the performances. And um, I, I really like this movie. Yeah, this this movie is, <laughs> it, it is good. Like, the make no mistake, this movie Copped a lot of shit, copped a lot of controversy before the release, which we're not going to go into because I um, and it didn't deserve that. No, it didn't. Like, and it's all about it's all got to do with agendas. But let's leave it at that. We're not, I'm not going to touch that. But anyway, um, I was looking forward to this movie immensely, um, just because you know it's another Marvel movie. It's been a very long time since we've had uh, Ant Man and the Wasp, which was August last year. Um, so what is that? Eight? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. But anyway, it was it was great. It was uh, sorry. I'm just gonna say good. <laughs> it was good. Um, the like you said, dude. The story, this the way the story played out was fantastic. Uh, I think Brie Larson is super likable. Like she, uh, as the movie went on, like I just kind of like started to care more and more about her character. Um, yeah, I feel like they didn't establish her very well at the beginning, but the more it went on, the more I grew to like her. 
Right, exactly. Samuel L. Jackson is the MVP of this movie. Oh, uh, yes. yes. Jonathan Ben Ben Mendelsohn is the second MVP of this movie. Um the cat is a third MVP of this movie. <laughs> um but but um I think that's kind of where the positives end. Like this this movie unlike movies like Guardians of the Galaxy, unlike uh, Captain America Winter Soldier or Civil War or uh, Thor Ragnarok or even Black Panther this movie doesn't really have like a signature to it it just feels like an early like I know what it's supposed to feel like a 1990s action movie which is fine great whatever it didn't feel like that the entire way through the car chase did which is great yeah it doesn't have a unique vision behind no, it no like, it doesn't it the, feels the- like it, it does feels have that like 90s it's element. just made by someone random. It doesn't feel like Anna Boden and Ryan Fleck directed this movie. Um, admittedly, I haven't seen any of their movies, but I can't imagine that those indie movies feel like this because it is, this doesn't feel like anything. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have a vision. It doesn't have a voice. It just kind of feels a bit flat. Well, um, in hindsight, that's yeah. biggest criticism about the Ant Man movies, especially Ant Man the Wasp. There's no yes element or gimmick like, and I think Marvel. It's, it's funny that we're noticing about these more recent films because Marvel said a long time ago, we're going to be more than superhero movies now. So most of the stuff are going to be genres. And they pitched Ant-Man as like a heist film, but it wasn't, it wasn't really a heist film. It had elements of a heist film. And like Captain Marvel's not really a 90s film. It's elements of a 90s film. Cause it's more like Guardians of the Galaxy 1 meets Winter Soldier uh, at a lot of points. Like it's got elements, but never fully commits. Like, Thor Ragnarok, they're like, we're going to make a comedy. And they made a fucking comedy. With the Winter Soldier, they're like, we're going to make a, a spy thriller. They made a spy right, that's thriller. that's exactly what I'm saying. Um, and, that's exactly and what I'm saying. So- I do agree with you. It, I feel like this had more of a voice than both of the Ant-Man movies, for sure. Um, but I do agree with really? you. For the I first don't. half, Yeah, I do. But for the first half of the film, um, I w- yeah, I'm in agreement with you for at least the first half because I was kind of like, oh, ah. Uh, I've seen, I've been there, done that with a lot of this. It was the same feeling I had yeah. watching Deadpool 2. It was like, oh, it's just Deadpool 1, except not as good. Yeah. Um, but this movie is really funny, um, especially Samuel Jackson and Ben Mendelsohn. They are so great. Um, the scrolls sometimes felt a little Am out I, of place. Did you, did you give your thoughts on this movie already? Like- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I was like mid sentence and I'm like, I'm, I'm holding on this thought and I'm just I'm like, I'm getting Matt, so excited. Matt, I'm sorry. Matt. Keep going. Keep going. Um, I have another negative. Okay. Before, like, we'll leave the scrolls and shit to the spoilers. All right. Let's leave that yeah. to the spoilers. I have another negative and it's a big negative and it's something that's in, like instrumental to Marvel movies. The action sequences were forgettable. Uh, I did not like. I like the action sequences. I did not love any action sequence. Probably, me- me- probably the-, the last one. It was fine, um, but each scene was confined and shot in darkness. And it- it's just it- the way it was shot. It was very handheld, very close up. Um, I just, I'm not, I'm not a fan of that style. So, uh, and and again, I think this comes down to Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck, who come from indie movies. Uh, I do want to see Half Nelson with Ryan Gosling. Apparently, it's great, but uh, yeah. So, Look, I do yeah. agree with you on that. I think um, the way the action is shot, it it's clearly by people who don't do action a lot. It's a lot of close-ups, a lot of hiding. Um, I said to you at one point, it's like, I think the best directed action sequence was a sparring match in the beginning. Um, but the end action scene was pretty cool. I did like the concept of the of the train chase but um i can see where you're coming from it's not super super memorable and it's not as bland and other than like the shot in the trailer of her going super saiyan is there like real super memorable action moments like you know bucky grabbing the winter soldier's shield you know there's no moments like that other than i guess her power up like that are action based so i, I see where you're coming from um yeah do let's you want move to jump on to spoilers. into spoilers? Yeah. Do you want to give uh, your score so, here? So, um, no, let's wait, wait till after the spoilers because, oh. Uh, no, we'll give it here. Yeah, okay, let's give a score. All right. What do you got? Uh, 7.5. I'm an 8. I'm leaning yeah, to an 8.5. I was an 8 and then it went down. Yeah. I might lean up to 8.5. I just really like the twist and I really like stuff. Oh, also, one more thing. Movie has great fan service. 
Um, can't knock that. But yeah. Oh, of um, course. That's 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 expected. Yeah. But you know what? I feel like, in, other than the Avenger movies, I feel some of the Marvel films have been lacking fan service lately. Um, like they weren't so amazing like before. But this one made up for a few of them. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say eight. All right, cool. Um, let's move on to spoilers. Would you like to know? I had a life here. What are you telling me? You've come a long way, but you're not as strong as you think. This war is just the beginning. I'm not going to fight your war. I'm going to end it. Okay, can we talk about spoilers now? Yes, Matt, we can okay. talk about spoilers. Let I'm loose. I want to say something really crazy. Five. You can still leave. Four. If you, if you hurt, no, if you don't want to spoil this, you can leave. Already played. Three. Just, just go. I want to say a spoiler. Two. Got to say a spoiler. One. How cute was the cat? <laughs> the cat was cute um everyone was like hyping it up and i'm just like i don't think we got enough of that cat in this movie to be yeah. honest i was expecting like a groot moment you know when he like <laughs> extends his branch and kills all those guys that didn't like that happened uh, minor in like a minor form but i was just like eh. you know like, there were some amazing jokes in this film but one criticism actually is some of the jokes were predictable there were two points in this film where i think i looked at you i said the joke and then it happened like when they saw the cat, I was like, that kid's going to fuck shit up later. And it did. It's an alien. And, um, yeah. spoilers. And then, um, when at the very end, when they're hyping up for that big final fight, I'm the like, idea, he's going to take Jones him out moment. in one shot. Yeah. And then, and then uh, yeah, I said, he's going to take her out in one shot. And you just looked at me and you go, yeah, Indiana Jones. And then Indiana Jones did. Like, um, yeah, these directors, I feel like their strong suit isn't comedy as the actors who did the comedy really well. And the strong suit also is an action, um, but they did do emotion well. Um, right. We had a few emotional scenes, and they were really good. Um, that one scene at like the where she meets her own friend. Damn, dude, that's a great scene. Yeah, there are some fantastic moments of emotion in this movie, uh, which is kind of funny because like the main criticism against Brie Larson in this entire like in the lead up to it was, oh, she's too emotionless. Uh, but like, which it's is. Not- like straight it's up, kind of sexist, dude. Like that annoys me when I hear that shit. Because like, I, I mean, like you, if they're going right uh, off the trailer, that's a little bit on the money. Like in the trailers, you know, she's not that that charismatic. I think, but um, but like when it does come down to those those emotional beats in this movie, it is fantastic. And like, you know, when we do find out about Talos's kind of like um issue, like the twist, it is great the way she handles it and the way she carries it. Um, it's fantastic. I do want to touch on something earlier. You said that this movie is kind of like a mix between Captain America and Guardians. Uh, I'd also throw Thor in there, uh, because you know you've got yeah. that you've got that fish out of water thing. Like you know he comes to Earth and he's just like, uh, "Give me a, I want a horse." Uh, whereas in this <laughs> it was like the Radio Shack shit, and uh, yeah, yeah, like a little the, bit, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. Like this movie feels like it um takes what worked out of a few different films and sort of shoves them in a blender, um, which is okay, but I think it also contributes it to feeling a little voiceless, like it doesn't feel like it's own in a way. Um, no, and and with the... Dude, I, I got to hit on the action scenes again. It just feels like they move from one set piece to another set piece, um, and it doesn't feel like anything sort of like connected with a tissue. It's just like, all right, we got to go here, we got to go here, we got to go here. It just, it just, it kind of feels segmented and it's just, it's weird. It's a weird movie. Um, I actually and- disagree. I feel like that really? worked for me. Yeah. Cause like the, 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 the plot was pretty planned out. Alien planet go to Earth cause they got to find the thing. They get the thing which says, no, you actually have to go up to space. They go to space. Like, and it's all like within the same sort of zone. Like, it's not like, I don't know. Like that wasn't an issue for me. Um, you know, it was an issue for me though. Thinking about it now, like so. The other thing is, we talked about how it sort of felt like it was lacking something. Um, the other thing for me is, 
and I sort of alluded to this before, but I don't want to get into spoilers. It's like with most of the standalone Marvel films, right? All the characters, like they've got some personality trait or something they cling to. Like um, Iron Man, he's this arrogant guy who's going to learn to sort of care more and take responsibility for his shit. Or Thor's going to learn to be more, um, be a better leader, be less reckless. Or, or Ant Man, he's fighting for his kid pretty much. Or, you know, but because we spent half the film, she's a soldier just following orders who just wants to know a bit more about her past. There's not really much character to her. And so that feels like it's lacking a lot. It's not until the amazing twist of um, Ben Mendelsohn's character, the scroll guy, is like, no, we're actually refugees. We're not trying to fight you and kill you. We're just trying to, uh, like, survive. And and then she chooses to help him. Like, that's the first, like, really big character moment I feel we get from her, other than, like, learning about a past where it's like, okay, I know what you're fighting for now and I can connect with that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I, and I definitely agree with you there. I, I think... um. See, I think that kind of that stuff, like what Iron Man has and what Captain America has, I think that kind of stuff is hard to pull off with a with an am- amnesia storyline. But yeah, it, it, it's a it's a it's a victim of its own plot device. But Bourne, and there's did not that. really much you can do about Bourne that. Bourne did that fantastically. The Bourne movies did that amazingly. Um, true, true. It, it, it's it's weird. Like this movie, uh, I don't think it was directed well. Uh, I think it could have been done a lot better. I don't think the writing was up to snuff as well. It felt like a it felt like a movie that had to be seen in order to get to Endgame. And uh man, we'll get to that I, I end disagree. credit scene. What really? Do you? Nah, like you could do Endgame without this film. But also I feel it worked as a standalone film. And I thought no. the writing was pretty good. Oh no, I think I think I think you can definitely do Endgame without this film, but I'm just saying, like, I think that they kind of like uh, I feel like they focused more on Endgame, even though I haven't seen it yet. I feel like that their priorities were kind of there, where they kind of like dropped the ball on this a little bit more. It just felt a bit, it just felt bland. Like there was no, the lack of vision and the lack of like just clarity, like the lack of like a, an actual voice. That is a big thing for me because this that lends to um, me forgetting it. Like we just talked about Escape Room. There is no vision in that movie, and I'm already forgetting that movie. Um, and the only reason I'm remembering this movie is because it's a Marvel movie. Um, well, I'm already, I'm already invested in the in the universe and things like that. So yeah, it, I think we I, should say, I don't know about you, but it's hard to judge it because like it's judging by filmmaking standards and by Marvel standards. Because by bar- Marvel standards, it's a pretty mediocre, it's sort of in the middle type film. But compared to other superhero movies like Aquaman, this shit's all over Aquaman, bro. I, I did like Wonder Woman better, uh, but like this shit's all over. A Batman v Superman isn't even the same league as this, you know. Um, I wouldn't be a Suicide Squad. To, like I, I, compared to other I, superhero films we're getting these days, outside of Marvel, like this is uh, miles above it. You know. I'll tell you what, though, I had a lot Wonder more Woman. fun with Aquaman. I. No, come on, I, man. We laughed no, way more on this. I think that's going to be a general consensus going around, dude. Give it a, give it a couple months. Everyone's going to be like, like that will be the general consensus. Like that movie knows exactly what it is. This movie, no, Aquaman has no idea what it is. You're fucking. You're you're dreaming. Oh, okay, okay. You know, okay. You know what? It knows it's cheesy, right? Yeah, but exactly. its cheesiness it works against it for a lot of times. For me, no, it doesn't. I feel like. Aquaman has a lot of clashing tones. I feel like it's very inconsistent. This movie is consistent, except for the CGI, which is something I haven't touched on yet. I didn't think the CGI was great in this film. Um, I thought I it was great. On it was possible. The, the de aging was great. Obviously, it was amazing. Fucking, it's like one of the talking dude, things. Samuel L. Jackson, holy shit! Like I just none of the uncanny, va- uncanny valley shit. It looked weird at first. I thought Clark Red looked weird. But then I realized, no, he was just acting weird because he was actually a scroll pretending to be him. Then once you see him, it was great. Um, but yeah, I feel like this film, it knew what it was. It just could have been directed better. Um, and and the character wasn't fully... We didn't, she wasn't formed well until later in the film. Um, I feel like if they could just somehow establish that better in the first act, it'd be so much of a better film. And if the action scenes were just a bit more clear. 
But I really enjoyed this film, dude. I, I was definitely better than Ant-Man and the Wasp. We can both agree on that at least, right? Yeah, yeah. It was better than Ant-Man yeah. and the Wasp, but I, I think Ant-Man and the Wasp... Uh, yeah, that, that movie's got it's, it's some problems. That, yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, like, this, this, this was just... Uh, I don't know. It did. It. I guess it did its job. Uh, introduced Carol Danvers. It introduced her powers. Uh, and it you know paved the way for her going forward. Um, it just I I it could have been done a lot better. Like it it had a lot more. It had a higher. It had a lot of potential. Uh, let's just keep it at that. Yeah, you know what? It could have. It could have been better. I can definitely say that. Um. Yeah, that's for sure. But ultimately, I had a good time. It was fun. I'll definitely watch it again. Um, just even if it's just for Ben Mendelsohn and Sam Jackson, like they they are scene stealers in this film. By the um, way, I I I love Ben Mendelsohn using his Aussie accent while he's like in scroll form, and when he's in disguise, <laughs> he uses the American accent. It's great. Mm. It's very good. Um, yeah, he he was he was so charismatic too. Like the way how chill he was and stuff. Um, yeah. Dude. Post credits. Dude. Post credits, right? Um, yeah, that, that was we, the best scene in the movie, s- and it wasn't even we, directed by them. <laughs> well, you could say Ant Man and the Wasp, I guess, but I don't know. Like it was it was really exciting to see how she appears in Endgame and how she Yeah man, like that was a really cool scene. Um dude, Stan Lee. Dude. The the, the thank you Stan oh. intro. That tribute. Oh my god. I will I will pay again to go see that one little tribute, that, that logo. Like that was theory, so awesome. I've got a theory with his wait, wait, cameo. Before, before you get to your theory, before you get to your theory, um while we're just while we're on the post credits, dude, Chris Evans, he's got the, the beard. He had the beard in that scene, which is cool. Did he? I thought he didn't. Yeah, he did. You know, he did. He definitely had the beard. But in the trailer, he doesn't, does he? No, he doesn't. <laughs> oh, so this might not even be an Endgame. Maybe it's well, I think before. I I think uh, in the trailer, like there's some kind of time thing going on. I think he actually starts the movie with a beard. So maybe interesting, interesting. Um, yeah, my little idea is I reckon because we know Stan loves to improv, improvise, and we know he like often says like funny one liners. I reckon they cut out a one-liner in that scene because they cut to him and they cut to Brie Larson and she gives him a smile and they put in some nice little somber music, sort of like a, it's almost like a happy thank you positive thing about Stan there and they cut away. I have a feeling like originally that was going to be a comedic scene and they recut it to make it more like- Yeah, probably. Appropriate. But, uh, and, uh, but how cool was it seeing him reading a more rat script? Dude, right? exactly what I was going to say, because Kevin Smith is... Uh, look, we love Stan Lee, but Kevin Smith loves Stan Lee. Like, that, <laughs> like <laughs> he has dedicated an entire, like, two and a half epi- two and a half hour episode of Fat Man or Batman to his, like, uh, like eulogize him. That, like, go listen to that episode, switch this off and go, like, right now. That, that episode is fantastic, but... Yeah, man, uh, it was. It honestly kind of like nearly <laughs> brought me to tears. I was just like, man, I love Kevin Smith, and it's so amazing seeing him, like seeing Stan Lee reading a Mallrats script because it it makes sense with the time with the, where they are in that decade. Um, and man, I can't. I actually can't wait to hear Kevin Smith talk about that, like how Marvel approached him. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to that Fat Man or Batman episode. Yeah, same. That's that's gonna be so cool. Um. Um, dude, the fan service this is cool. It was nice seeing Clark Gregg again, but the the big one is like, I lost my fucking shit when the Tesseract appeared. I was like, oh my god! Like I was saying, like, is that no? That is that's not that. Oh my god! Like seeing the Tesseract in this film. Oh man, I was yeah. So I saw you. Stoked. I saw you struggling to like work out the timelines, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you're like, oh, it was in Thor, and I'm like, dude. <laughs> this is how it goes. Captain America, it fell off the ship. It landed in the ocean. Uh, in 2012, um, you know, the next time we saw it was with Samuel L. Jackson and Loki, you know, steals it and shit in Avengers. Uh, but this obviously took place in the 90s with uh, with Marvel, like that character. She's yeah. in the Air Force, so she must have got a hold of it somehow. Uh, and then, you know, 
ingested by the cat, spits it up on Nick Fury's desk, and there it is. Lo and behold. And bro, bro, the end, like the protector initiative, looks at the ship, backspace, 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 the Avenger initiative, ooh, that, that and the beautiful. music comes in, yeah. ooh. Alan Silvestri ooh. score, dude, so good, so good. Ooh, oh, so you happy. You know I love ooh. that score as well, yeah. Ooh, I do. You know, speaking of score and music, um, slight criticism, very I slight. I thought this was good. I, no, like, no, 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 no. The score was good, but the licensed music filmed a little shoehorned in. Like, at times, I feel like it didn't actually even fit. Like, there was a fight scene that had the I'm Just a Girl song, and it didn't feel like it worked. It felt a bit out of place. And even the, as much- You saw me. I was happy when they started playing Nirvana, but it just felt like it was in the wrong scene as I'm well. I'm just like, and- Matt, can you stop fucking dancing? Like, <laughs> yeah, but- uh, I don't know. I feel like it was an afterthought, a lot of the songs in this movie, which is weird because when you're making a 90s film, a throwback film, that should be the first thing you think of is 90s jams. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I don't really care about licensed music. I'm more about score, but um, like, it, it didn't it didn't sway me one way or the other. It was just kind of there. Um, but I did like the score. It had kind of like this electronic little synth vibe going to it. I, I, I liked it. Yeah, um, I'm having trouble thinking of anything else to mention. Is there anything else no, you think that needs to be covered? We're done. Yeah, Captain Marvel was marvelous. Anywho, uh, thanks for hanging out with Matt and Zoheb here on this upcoming attraction episode of Midnight Double Feature. Please find us on social media, join our Facebook group, and be our best friend when we talk about news, movies, and memes, the after party. Um, so find the after party on Facebook or find the Midnight Double Feature on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you are. Please leave us a review on iTunes and we will love you so, 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 so very much. Um, we got a new uh, uh, feature presentation coming out shortly. Um, we are covering small soldiers in, in some depth. Are you excited about that one, Zoe? You know the music? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like this electronic um, guitar riff. It's awesome. It's pretty great. Um, Anyways, we are super stoked you hung out with us. Please drop us a line. Let us know your thoughts, what you think. What feature presentation would you like us to cover? Are there any more films coming out that you think we should also cover for upcoming attractions? Um, Holler at your boys. Uh, (laughs) And I think that wraps it up for tonight, um, for today. So thank you so much. And uh, we'll catch you on the flippity flop. Laters.